Hello, welcome to my tech fam. My name is Igor and I have a Corex Y 3D printer review in this video. And this box is sent to me by geekbuying.com in exchange for a review. And this printer is 2.3 uh, Zafir Plus Corex Y 3D printer. Now the building volume uh, information from the website 300 and by 300 in XY direction and uh, on one place it has 350 on Z axis but a little bit lower it says uh, 330 millimeters. So this is something I have to measure later when it's assembled. The footprint is quite big so uh, 460 by 485 this is the uh, area which it requires on the desk when it's assembled. It uses linear rails on X, Y and Z direction. It has BMG dual gear extruder, but it is the boat and style extruder. It has dual Z axis, so this means that bigger uh, printing bed is uh, supported by two sides. And some more information from the website. It says it supports different sensors like auto bed leveling, filament run sensors and similar. And it says on X and Y axis it has uh, TMC2208 uh, silent stepper motor drivers. That's good, but uh, maybe this means it doesn't have those silent stepper motor drivers on Z and extruder. Temperatures uh, for the nozzle maximum is 260 and for the bed is 100 degrees Celsius. Information is from the website. But uh, I think it has that uh, Bowden style uh, hot end which touches the nozzle. So it's not recommended to go above uh, 240 degrees Celsius because of those toxic fumes. Corex Y, but uh, it says recommended speed uh, 60 millimeters per second and the maximum is 200 millimeters per second. Well, uh, I don't know, it's Corex Y, so I wouldn't like to run it on 60 millimeters per second. I mean, I can do that with Ender 3 or something like that. Now, a few words about Corex Y mechanism. So this is a little bit different compared uh, with, uh, let's say, cubic frame Cartesians like on Ender 5 or similar, because there uh, we have a separate stepper motor for each axis. We have a stepper motor for X and uh, Y axis. The problem is that X axis stepper motor is on a moving part. So this means we, we need that uh, motor light as possible uh, because it has very big moment of inertia. With Corex Y we have two stepper motors for X and Y direction and they are fixed. With Corex Y, if you want to have a movement only in X or Y direction, both stepper motors have to work together. This means we can have faster movement in X and Y direction. But let's say we need a diagonal movement of 45 degree angle. In that case, only one stepper motor works on Corex Y. So in that case, theoretically, the cubic frame Cartesian has the advantage. But as I mentioned here, the stepper motors are fixed. And this means they can be bigger and they are probably. I will check that when I assemble this. And uh, this means uh, we can have stronger motors. Now about Corex Y, uh, one disadvantage, uh, it is very important to have good quality timing belts. They are much longer compared to the uh, cubic frame Cartesians. And uh, this means that we need more to pay more attention to that. They have to be tight and similar. They should be tight uh, by the factory, but let's say in a year or two, we have to check this and uh, if they're not tight or maybe we have to retight them or similar. So uh, on cubic frame Cartesians, uh, we have less maintenance work uh, like on these Corex Spice, but as I mentioned, we can reach uh, higher speeds. Okay, now let's see what's in the box. This is quite a big box. And I will need a lot of space on the desk. Thanks card. On user manual it looks quite good. Color pictures. Even the build plate is not assembled. Be careful with these wires not to break them. I think they should protect a little bit better this. This is the main frame, top frame with the Core X5 mechanism and you can see how long are these timing belts. Here those two stepper motors and they are not uh, bigger than, I don't know, like those on Ender 3 or something like that. I think they are just regular NEMA 17 stepper motors. We have some plastic covers here, the power cable with the U-plug. Sample filament which is on the spool, which uh, I'm happy about it, 200 gram uh, TPLA. USB cable, small SD card with USB adapter and then some uh, bobbin tube, tools, zip ties, allen keys, spare nozzle. This is that uh, BMG extruder, 
we go here and it's gear properly reduced I'm not sure about the gear ratio but I'm not happy with this plastic gear I, I'm happy when it's metallic hmm, there are some clips uh, to hold the glass on the heated plate and there are some new types I never saw this kind different screws and bolts for assembling there are 90 degree angle connections properly for L extrusion and some uh, bolts and T-nuts a spool holder oh this is a small one few other parts ah they give these stronger springs they are in blue color and these are the adjusting knobs I'm not sure what is this clip for maybe for some cable management I believe these are some kind of holders for the lead screw and there is a limit switch, not sure if it's a spare part or maybe it has to be assembled I believe these are the legs for the printer this should be the holder for the heated plate and I can see there are those nuts for the lead screw I think it's thermal insulation for the heated plate and this is the glass it's quite big 310 by 310 millimeters these are some alo extrusion with assembled linear rails on it and this level is empty four pieces of 20 by 40 alo extrusions then two smaller 20 by 20 alo extrusion and uh, two lead screws they look in good, good shape and they are straight and this is the base oh boy this is a big one a lot of cables and the hot end already attached to the base so I have to take it out together and the box is empty first step is installing the legs from the bottom so I will take the opportunity to take a look what's inside I have to put something below it X goes here but let's see what's inside four screws removed and the plate came down very easily Oh, the power supply it's always recommended to check if it is set to correct voltage for your country but this switch should be visible from the outside these are two stepper motors for z-axis and they are connected uh, on the other side with this timing belt so they will always stay synchronized that's good because there is no accidentally uh, moving when it's powered off there is a fan which cools the what is this the main board uh -huh. and this is the back side of the screen now one thing I will do here uh, I want to glue these wires to the plate I don't want them accidentally touch this uh, timing belt <laughs> let's count the fans so we have here which blows the air inside this area then probably we have one inside the power supply and then we have here one which blows the air on the mainboard and I'm very curious are these uh, wires from the hotbed uh, cream that do they have ferrous or they are thin but uh, I think this is the opening from the other side I'm placing back the cover and installing four legs Now let's see what's below this plate, the main board. This is the picture of the main board, these are the stepper motor driver connection. And uh, here goes the hotbed and the uh, extrusion head uh, connection. And as I can see, uh, there are no ferrules. I can see five stepper motor drivers and uh, I'm a little bit confused uh, so probably the z-axis has the separate uh, stepper motor driver but uh, since they are connected with timing belt we cannot use the advantage of separate stepper motor driver for example to auto align the z-axis if necessary with information from the auto bed leveling sensor and these are TMC 2208 stepper motor drivers the mainboard is uh, maker base uh, Robin Nano V1.3 now let's put this back on and continue with assembling and just few thoughts about this Core XY mechanism before I place it on the printer 
These timing belts are 6 mm thickness. So I believe that uh, with this length they should use at least 10 mm timing belts. And uh, I cannot see the possibility how to put the tension on these timing belts. So all these wheels pulleys are fixed. I cannot see the possibility to move the position of the stepper motor. And these are the end of the timing belts. They are also fixed. Maybe these are some eccentric nuts for the tightening. And same in this corner here. Now actually Stepon is quite big assembling this frame. So these two with linear rails will go uh, in the middle. This with the space goes down. Uh, pay attention that there are some plastic parts which prevents uh, these two fall down. Uh, we will remove this later because if this fall down it will be a quite big problem. You cannot put it back so easily. And about this uh, 20 by 40 alloy extrusion, we have four of them, but they're not uh, symmetric completely. There is a groove in this slot and it is a place for the head of this bolt, like here. So we have the smooth side, they always goes outside, and pay attention, so this uh, groove in the slot uh, is on external side. And of course up and not down. On one side we have a larger hole for the head of the bolt, it goes up. Smooth side goes outside. Nothing is tightened yet, so I have to use two bolts from the side and two bolts from the bottom. But which bolts uh, it has here uh, on the drawing, M5 by 16 or M5 by 10. But which is from this packaging, uh, I have to watch the part list and here I can identify the numbers. So it would be better if we would have the correct size here on these bags. So M5 by 16 uh, is number 20 and it goes from the side. I will not tie them yet, only when I place the bottom screws too. With the same method I'm installing these two screws for this uh, linear rails holder. Step 3 installing the frame beam and for this I need M5 by 30 volts and these are uh, numbered with number 17. So all six vertical alloy extrusions are fixed, uh, these from the bottom and from the side and these are in the middle only from the bottom. Step 4 is installing the roof which is actually installing this Corex Y mechanism. So I thought the stepper motors should go on the back side but there is a logo so probably it should be installed in this position. And two bolts from the side, M5 by 16, which is number 20. And I will not tighten them yet, only when I insert two from the top. And now I am tightening these four bolts. And same on the other three sides. Step 5 is installing the set square. Uh, with this we will make this uh, beam uh, more rigid and square. And for this I have to prepare these T-nuts and the bolts in exactly this position. And when I insert them into the slot uh, and I rotate the bolts, they will rotate 90 degrees and lock into position. All four are installed and I can move to the next step. Which is step 6, installing the hotbed support. And we have two of them. For this I have to use these M3 bolts which are numbered with uh, number 18. The movement is very smooth and it should stay like this when I install the aluminium plate here and if not then I can adjust it with those uh, four bolts. Step 7, install the lead screw through these uh, nuts and into the coupling. The lead screws are very dry so don't forget to add some grease or some lubricant when it's finished. And same on the linear rails. But there is one important thing. To make these supports uh, aligned and uh, squared with the lead screw, I will place, uh, I found these uh, aluminium pieces with, of the same length below on each side. And one side of the support sits on this aluminium, uh, I will lower the other side on the same height and then I will tie finally the couplings.
and now they are in the same height and square with this lead screw. And don't worry if it is not super precise now, because you will compensate later with those springs during the bed leveling. Step 8 is installing this lead screw bracket or holder and the version which uh, with the limit switch goes on the right side. T nuts goes into this slot. And then I move this bed support completely up and only then I will tie these bolts completely. The other side is tied too, but to be honest I'm not too big fan of these holders. Of course on the other side we need it uh, because it holds the limit switch, but I saw some problems which are case actually with these holders. They just hold, uh, pr protect this uh, lead screw from the bending, but actually the movement is secured with these linear rails. Step 9 is installing the heating plate, but uh, they don't mention at all that uh, it would be good to place this uh, thermal insulation now when it's much more comfortable on the back side. I try to place it into the middle so this hole has to be opened. And now the knobs. And I put some tension on the springs, I will compress them approximately to half size. Step 10 is installing the nozzle kit. This is the back side of the printer and I have to screw it here with these three bolts. But something I don't understand. So if I install it here, it will be much harder to attach this bobbin tube later because I have to do it inside. So why don't they uh, recommend to install it now and only then attach this uh, nozzle kit to the carriage. Oh, it goes completely down touching the nozzle probably. Interesting, I'm not sure is it visible, but this one bolt is too long and it's pushing this uh, locking mechanism for the Teflon tube. So I will just put a washer on this side here. And now it's fine, I can see some gap between this plastic uh, lock mechanism and the bolt. Step 15, X and Y axis motors and Y and stop. And the cable goes into this groove and it will be covered with these plastic covers. Same on the other side and the Y-axis limit switch. Just pay attention that the Y-axis limit switch cable don't touch the timing belt. Step 16, fixing the nozzle kit and the feed tube. And uh, for this I have to use this plastic clip. And it will be here, so uh, it's a little bit strange pad for the this feed tube, because it goes here, so I have to go back. No, I'm not too happy to move this around, so I will just uh, zip them together here and then maybe I will just see the printed some part and use these two bolts to hold this in this natural path direction. Step 17 is installing the Z-axis uh, limit switch, but it's already installed, so only I have to connect this wire. And I will use this plastic cover to place this cable into this slot of our extrusion. Step 18 is connecting the extruder stepper motor wire and it's labeled with E. And this wire, I believe it is for, for filament runout sensor, which uh, is not included in this kit with this printer. It is an optional unit. And uh, later I noticed uh, it was in this bag behind the USB drive and the memory card. I have this. Uh, properly this is the filament runout sensor. And uh, yes, that should be plugged here. Uh, but currently I don't even know uh, where to assemble it and it's not mentioned at all in the user manual. I have to print some kind of holder or bracket for this, uh, but uh, until I do that I will start with this uh, printing and review without uh, this filament runout sensor so far. Connected the heat plate wires, this is the heater and for the sensor.
There are a few more steps here which uh, tell us to connect in inside the box these wires, but in my case they are already connected. And actually it's assembled then. It was time for a quick test, but I noticed a serious problem with homing the Z. I have a problem with homing the Z. X and Y works fine, but then I try to home the Z. So I'm not sure, but uh, maybe it only stops uh, one stepper motor and not the other, but they are connected with timing bad. So I'm not sure actually uh, what is the real problem. I removed the cable from Z2 stepper motor, so only Z1 is connected. And when I start homing and I press the limit switch, it doesn't react at all. And now Z1 is removed. I again started the homing and pressing the Z limit switch. And it works fine. So the limit switch only stops the Z1, but it doesn't stop the Z2. These are XYZ limit switches, and for Z we have two. When I move the Z switch to the second plug, uh, then the other stepper worked correctly. My solution was to connect the Z switch parallel to these plugs. I have some GST connectors and until I will show you some soldering and crimping uh, footage, uh, let's talk about uh, other solutions. So, uh, one of the simplest solutions would be to left it to work only from one stepper motor, and since they are connecting with timing belt, it would work too. Of course, the most elegant solution would be to add another limit switch, and in that case, uh, we can have that auto line. But in that case, uh, I would uh, remove the timing belt. And uh, actually, as you can see, my solution is something between, so I will have only one limit switch, but the signal I will split with this cable to two plugs. And in this case, uh, I will have the timing belt, which will keep in the synchron the stepper motors, even if they are powered off. But I don't have that out line possibility with this solution. And of course, firmware update would be a solution too, which would support working with uh, only one limit switch. And my cable is ready, it's time to test it. Okay, let's see if this will solve the problem. So I will split the signal from the Z limit switch. Home Z. And it works. Now I can put this cover back and continue with the review. I try to do some cable management here, but definitely this is a very temporary solution. So I have to find some better way to fix this because uh, I'm afraid that uh, it will be clean between the linear rails. So it, it should stay somehow in, in upper position. And I almost forget I have to place the glass on this aluminum heated plate, but it's not mentioned anywhere in this product manual. There is also a protection foil on this aluminum plate and it's not mentioned at all in the manual. Uh, it doesn't look like a Teflon, so definitely I don't think it should be here during the printing. Especially if you want to heat up 200 degrees Celsius, so I remove this. You also have this protection foil. And this is how it works. It looks like we have this some kind of plastic part and I will insert it into the middle of this set screw and then I can tighten it from the bottom the glass and to finally tighten it I need a screwdriver which is not included in the kit so distance between clips now is 272 millimeters so instead of 300 we reduce now the printing area Ok, but now everything should be ready, let's turn it on and uh, do the first uh, homing and the bed leveling. I already fixed that error, so now I'm going to the tools, home and uh, do the homing at all axis. I'm ready to switch it off just in case. Extremely nice and responsive screen. Well, it's a pity it's a little bit small, but uh, very good for the touch. And uh, it's time to do the first uh, bed leveling. And uh, as you can see, it is manual, but uh, so called assist bed leveling. So with these buttons, I can move the nozzle to the desired position and I have to rotate that knob. 
and then move to the second point so that I don't have to move the hot end uh, with my hand. Okay, let's start with the first point. And I'm rotating the knobs until I get that uh, small friction between paper and the nozzle and then I can move to the second point. <laughs> I wanted to do the time lapse of the head leveling but uh, it moved a little bit more from the, than the head position so uh, it should move above the, this knob. Let's see the third point. So it really acts like like bed is I don't know uh, maybe 20 by 20. And this is the firmware issue. Of course, I always have the option to move with my hand, but so I have to go out from here and uh, inside the settings I have to turn off the motors and now I can move manually the head. And now I will finish the same process I started a minute ago. Only now I will manually move the nozzle above the knob. And then I will rotate it until I get that uh, perfect friction. And then move it again with my hand to the next position. Remember, don't move the hot end too fast because the stepper motors can create some current and damage the mainboard. And repeat this procedure until you get that perfect friction in all four corners and also for uh, checking in the center too. And then the bed is leveled, which means it is parallel with the moving pad of the nozzle. And it's time to heat up the nozzle and fit the filament. It is in nice vacuum packaging. Four gigabyte SD card. And it's time to print something. And the first printing will be always from the SD card. And it looks like that uh, there are no jiggles on this SD card. I really don't have luck with this printer. Even the USB uh, adapter is broken. So I have to use a different one. And actually this is the content of the SD card. It is one big, uh, more than 3 GB uh, RAR file. It's compressed file, so I'm not surprised that uh, printer couldn't see the content. Inside this RAR we have a folder, another folder, and then we have a few other folders. So here we have some configuration files, frequently asked questions, installation instructions in PDF, instruction video, software and instructions so here we have the repetitor host and the ultimaker cura but i will use uh, my own version that actually which is uh, downloaded the latest version and then we have here test file actually there is one g code but of course you couldn't see the content of the sd card because it's compressed so i will just uh, move it to the root of this uh, sd card and try to print and it looks like it is xyz calibration cube of 20 millimeters and this is the ultimate cure I'm using, adding a printer, non-network printer, two trees, and there is Zephyr Plus. Uh, almost correct, I think I will change this to 330 on the Z-axis, but everything else is fine. Heated bed, extruder 1.75, okay. I'm importing the STL file, which will be the Benchy. Uh, generic PLA, standard quality. It's much easier to see this first time. Okay, 200 degrees Celsius will be the temperature and 60 degrees on uh, build plate. Slice. Printing time, 1 hour 19 minutes. We will see. I have two GCOS files now on this SD card. Let's try to print them. Printing and there is oh, it would be good to have a longer file names. Test XYZ. Hmm, we have a preview image. Just quick check what can I set here? Temperature of fan, filament, speed, baby step. Okay, uh, probably this I will need. Usually when the printing, maybe sometimes I want to move up and down little those baby steps.
printing is approximately at 50%, so far so good. Well, the printing is at 90% uh, in a few minutes it will be finished. And this calibration cube was my first printing with this printer. Uh, the Z, this is the top layer and very interesting finish. It, it didn't just uh, close the last layer, but it goes somehow around. These are X and Y X. And uh, well, I can see some minimal ghosting here on Y axis, but uh, very minimal. And I can see this black line must be some dirt on the filament or in the hot end. And this is the bottom surface, which is very interesting texture, thanks to the uh, glass surface. And uh, I didn't clean the rim completely, but I can feel some elephant foot, but that's normal with these uh, printers. Don't forget, this was printed with uh, 0.1 millimeter layer height. And it's time to print the Benchy. Hmm, I don't have a preview image here. I notice the retraction is a little bit loud. I place here the microphone. And the reason for that is this extruder have that gear ratio and with uh, 40 millimeters per second speed it have to move the stepper motor very fast. So a solution for this will be that I will reduce the retraction speed to 25 millimeters per second. Printing is almost finished in one and a half hours. And the printing is finished and immediately I want to check the bed adhesion. Okay. The skirt came down very easily. So I hope when it cools down I can easily remove the benching. And actually this benchy came out quite good. The only problem I can notice uh, so far are these seams on this side, but very hardly noticeable. The overhang came out perfectly, the first layer also, the hole and the bridging. Chimney was also printed nicely because uh, the cooling was enough from both sides. My next printing will be a cylinder, which I actually need as a support for my shaft uh, on the desk. And um, I want to raise a little bit the speed to see the quality. Printing speed is 100 mm per second. And the cylinder is ready, a really nice surface, uh, very minimally noticeable horizontal lines. And these are seams, but quite happy with surface quality. And this is holder for better cable management. Stepper motors are almost cold. 37 degrees the X and 32 the Y. I'm installing the new cable holder and I'm removing the previous one which I actually need somewhere else. And this is the bracket for filament runout sensor. If you need the STL file you can download it from mytechfun.com website, link in the description. And I will just test it with the fake filament, I don't want to unplug this one. Filament sensor open, enabled. Let's see what happens if I pull out the filament from the sensor. Stop the printing. I place it back, resume button. And it's printing in wrong position. So after the crash it lost its real position and now I have this layer shift in printing. Let's try to update the firmware. I downloaded the latest version from the 2.3's website. Hmm. 
Looks like it's finished. Let's check the bed leveling. Actually, my bed is leveled now, only I want to see if I press the second button, will it move into middle or on the correct position. And this one was also in the center and not somewhere on the side. Okay. Filament run out test after firmware update. I place back the filament in sensor and now is some. Ah, and it works now good. And now we measure the noise from exactly a half meter distance. And this information is added to my website when you can compare it with the other CD printers. I have a final thoughts about Tutri's Zafir Plus Core XY CD printer. Well, I love it or hate it. Uh, first I will start with I didn't like on this printer. Uh, I noticed the manual is not really complete. Uh, yes, we have the video manual, but on their YouTube channel they could provide, I don't know, some additional or more detailed manual. Or you can use this video, of course. I thought the 6mm belts will be uh, not enough. I thought, uh, I know, 10mm like on Voron or maybe on uh, Ender 7, uh, but it works fine up to 150mm per second. I didn't notice any additional ghosting. So, 6mm, yes, works fine, but with uh, wider belts and bigger stepper motors, it could reach properly even higher speeds. Of course, this in this price range, uh, we should be satisfied. Uh, the switch for the voltage, 220 or 110 uh, volts, should be somehow outside, not inside. Of course, if everything is preset correctly, then it's not a problem, but uh, not everything is uh, prepared on this printer correctly. Z-axis. So I had a lot of problems with the Z-axis. Uh, it was some kind of uh, not in synchronized the firmware and the version which I got here because it arrives only with one limit switch So uh, you saw my solutions to that problem also with the bed leveling um, It was prepared with the firmware with, with the smaller bed size that assisted my bed leveling And also I have problems with the filament runout sensor and now uh, after the firmware update all these three main issues are solved so actually, yes, that it can be useful, uh, but uh, definitely I'm sure that uh, most of the beginners will not recognize these problems. Maybe they cannot even describe the problem to the tutors or the support. Uh, so I don't know, so th these things should be prepared uh, in the factory and uh, when a user gets this printer everything uh, assemble it, everything works fine. Of course, there are uh, a lot of advantage. The price, for this price you get a very rigid structure, Core XY CD printer, and uh, with linear rails on all three axes. Even on Ender 7, on Z axis, it is supported only on one side, so it's single Z axis, and it is supported by the V slot wheels. And here we have the linear rails, so uh, for this price, this is a great printer. Uh, of course, uh, prepare that uh, you need to do some uh, upgrading and tinkering. For this bed size, I think the B attached should be included by the default. Uh, I checked the website, uh, I couldn't see any firmware uh, for the B attach separately, but I saw in the settings that I can enable the B attach. Uh, only I didn't try it yet because I don't have a B attach for this printer. So, do I recommend this printer? For the beginners, not really. Uh, for advanced users, or, or if this will be your second CD printer, then definitely yes, but uh, if you are ready to do some uh, small fixing if necessary and uh, upgrades. Okay, uh, thank you for watching and happy printing!